My name is Francesco Sanino. I'm professor at the University of Southern Denmark, head of a center of excellence in particle physics. And what I will discuss today is the uh, mystery behind the dark and bright side of the universe. In order to understand the dark side of the universe, we have to first have a look at the bright side. Stars, planets, oceans, us, are made by the same elementary constituents, the bright particles, the particles that then shine, they shine light. Putting together the electron and quarks, you can form atoms, and those are the building blocks of all the things you have seen before. Thus, we, we, could, thus we could call this the particle universe. We can, for example, how do we, we can actually in the laboratory construct this if you see the proton, the proton is made by quarks, the quarks make the nucleus, the nucleus makes the atom, then you zoom out a little bit, you see crystals, and at the end you see a sugar cube. A sugar cube is made of the same stuff we are made of. But that is not all there is. In fact, the atoms constitute a very small fraction of the entire universe. If I were to think of the universe as an iceberg, only the part above the sea level would be made of the same stuff and makes us. That is, 4% of the universe is made by the same stuff. What is uh, not known is what makes 96% of the universe. That's that side which, which we don't understand is called the dark side. The dark side is, at least to the best of our understanding, made at least of two different components, a dark matter and a dark energy. Dark matter is look, looks like ordinary matter in the sense that it clumps in the universe, makes a dark galaxies. As I speak to you, uh, we sit in a dark galaxy, five times larger than ours. But thanks to this dark galaxy, we exist because our bright galaxy was formed because the dark side provides the seed for creating the bright galaxy. So that is the technical name of uh, structure formation. So it's absolutely essential for us existence of the dark side, the dark matter. So dark energy is different. It's not uh, uh, it's hom homogeneously distributed in the universe. If you think of the universe as a balloon, as a surface of a balloon, uh, and you think about a balloon uh, inflated by a kid, the balloon expands because the kid inflates it. Dark energy is exactly this inflating of our universe as a balloon. So when we try to understand what makes dark energy, it's like looking for the key behind our universe. Right? So this is the main difference between dark matter and dark energy. Behind dark matter, there is a dark story. When was dark matter thought of? Right? It was thought of to exist already in 1953 by Frank Zwicky by looking how the velocity of the galaxies in a big a cluster of galaxies called a coma cluster would move. When he was looking at the motion of the galaxy, he realized that the motion of the galaxies was not consistent with the amount of bright matter you would see inside the coma cluster. And therefore, he dubbed the dark matter that he couldn't see dark matter. Why is it a dark story? Because nobody believed him. Right? Dark matter existence was not accepted immediately. It took many, many decades. The reason of that is that at that time, we did not have precision cosmology, and therefore, it was dubious to uh, immediately accept the existence of dark matter. Only recently, Vera Rubin and collaborators uh, looked at the rotation of the galaxy, you know, the beautiful arms of a galaxy, right, when they actually go around a, a, their own center. And they also uh, realized that the only way that you could account for the velocity of uh, the arms of the galaxy away from the center was to assume that there was some other stuff. Either that or modifying gravity at large distances. Right? Nowadays, it seems more accredited the theory that we need to have dark matter. So that is very, very important. Of course, we have now to distinguish theory from experiments, right? So what are our ideas about dark matter and how we can go about and look for it? Right? So the theory is very simple you know that the bright part is made by particles, like the electron and quarks. What if the dark matter is also made by particles? Right? This is, of course, cartoons of uh, the way I interpret uh, you know, uh, on, a, on a screen this dark matter. This is not the way it looks, right? It's not the way uh, I 
that make it you perceive it. So there will be also dark particles, but we don't know where these dark particles come from, what makes them. They are not coming from the same forces that explain the bright side. And therefore, you need to speculate on what is the new forces you need to create these dark particles. So there are some candidate theories, and there are many of them, so I will only present the three major ones. One is called Technicolor. And where, why is it called Technicolor? Because uh, what makes the uh, proton are the quarks, and the theory of quarks, the theory of color, of course, quantum chromodynamics. So what if there is a dark neutron, right? made by technique quarks, and therefore this is called a technicolor theory. So in that case, the dark matter would actually be like our ordinary neutron and proton, but made by dark quarks or technique quarks. Uh, supersymmetry, this is a, a theory which tells that every single particle we know has brother and sisters. For example, the electron has a sister called the selectron. The quark has a brother called the squark. And so in this case, the dark matter will be one of these brother-sisters objects. Right? Currently, the Large Hadron Collider seems to disfavor supersymmetry. So people are moving toward technicolor more and more. And this is exactly what we work on here at, uh, at SDU, at the University of Southern Denmark. Finally, there can be even more exotic possibilities. We might live in a world which, which features extra dimensions. In this case, dark matter will be a, a sign of extra dimensions. Right? So I will not dwell more on that, but those are the three major ideas behind dark matter and also how is it related to bright matter. You probably notice that technical supersymmetry and extra dimensions also have to explain the bright side of the universe. So they're actually intimately related. But this as, f as far as for the theory, how do we go and test this uh, hypothesis? Well, we have to make experiments. The largest experiment ever constructed by human beings is the uh, Large Hadron Collider experiment at CERN. This is an aerial view of CERN, and the circle you see that is underground, 100 meters underground, and that we have a big accelerator called the Large Hadron Collider. But what does Large and Hadron and Collider mean? Well, large is because it's really large, 27 kilometers in circumference. Hadron is because it accelerates protons or ions. And protons, as we have uh, said before, are made by quarks. So these guys are not uh, uh, slim objects. These guys are fat objects. And in Greek, fat is hadros. And therefore, we call these guys hadrons. So we accelerate fat objects. Right? Colliders, because they collide to beams of uh, protons in opposite directions. And if you uh, imagine the two protons here, uh, the cartoon of two protons here to be, for example, inside a beam, what you do, you make them collide, and then you produce new particles. Right? So from the collision of these at extremely high energy, we accelerate these protons almost near the speed of light, that at the highest speed you can possibly uh, achieve for any particle, you can create new matter. But how can you do that? How can you create new matter from ordinary matter? Well, thanks to the Einstein equal to mc square, from energy, we can create matter and vice versa. And therefore, we need to go to higher energy to construct objects. We haven't seen that before. So this is a, a movie uh, of uh, how would uh, a collision work at CERN. Of course, it's a reconstruction. It's a cartoon uh, description of that. You see the protons, see the quarks inside. Now, you will uh, meet another proton coming from another side of, uh, of the collider inside one particle detector. This is the Atlas particle detector. And from that, you liberate, technically liberate, the particle inside the protons. And even particles which were not in nature before, at least not around us. In this case, we will, uh, for example, liberate among thousands of particles, the electron, the positrons, going, flying away from each other. And, uh, and from that measurement, by looking at these two uh, uh, lines, you can actually reconstruct a new object called the Z. And this is, for example, one of the carriers, so one of the four fundamental forces of the universe. The hope is that beyond reproducing, we already know we could even, by similar uh, collisions, generate, for example, dark matter. 
object. So we'll, in this case, we'll be holding dark matter in our hands. But we can do also something else. We can look in the sky. As I told you before, we live in a dark universe. Uh, right now, you're seated inside this dark universe and uh, dark matter, and which is five times more abundant than you. So there is also a very high uh, probability that this, this dark matter will, from uh, time to time, decay in ordinary particles. If, for example, by sending uh, 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 sending uh, probes into the space, we can look at the decay products of these, uh, of these uh, objects and, for example, uh, have a, an idea what dark matter is made of. This is, uh, for example, the, uh, one of the duties of the Fermilat experiment in, uh, in the sky of the NASA, while the European Space Agency has another experiment called Planck, and Planck will actually look at the far, far distances in our universe, the actually stream boundary of our universe, which holds the secret of the Big Bang, because the further we actually look, the older is the light coming to us, right? So that's what we have an imprint of the uh, Big Bang, and therefore of what has been the origin of bright, dark side of the universe. We live in exciting times. There are so many experiments. As I told you, there is the Large Hadron Collider. You can see on the iceberg, it actually tries to bridge between the bright side and the dark side, mostly dark matter. And so the idea is to use this experiment to try to connect these two sides and get a better hold of uh, the relations between the two. But then we also have um, uh, space experiments like the uh, Fermilat or Planck and many other experiments. These are only representative of hundreds of experiments going right now in uh, in, uh, on Earth to trying to explain or to understand the features of dark matter. And so we are absolutely sure that in within the five to ten years from now, we will have to rewrite the books of physics, at least uh, the, what the physics we know right now. So you should stay tuned. Thank you. Mm -hmm.